Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks very much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, all the speakers are very humble, and they say that uh, the dean gave them uh, the assignment. But actually, for me, it's a real assignment because uh, all my uh, points that I'm going to cover have already been addressed <laughs> by the previous speakers. And I guess my job is just to, to concretize uh, their viewpoints, and I will be uh, uh, go to the great details of the government work report, and uh, and also uh, uh, um, voice out our views on these uh, concrete uh, objectives in the uh, government work report. And I know that a lot of people are probably already very uh, uh, eager for coffee break, so I, I try to be as concise as possible. So. Uh, Okay. Um, as uh, the dean already mentioned, that uh, uh, the previous year, 2017, we already uh, we uh, we saw an uh, unexpected pickup of China's real GDP growth, and we have to note that uh, 2.9, uh, 6.9 GDP growth was the first time in the past eight years, I guess eight or nine years that China's GDP growth uh, did not slow down, but pick up. So we thought that starting from 20, 2008, probably Chinese GDP will continue to slow down year by year, probably all the way to 2% or 3%. But we see a reversal of this trend in the past year. So I think that's uh, probably to many people are unexpected. So for this year, we see the government work report sets the GDP growth target of around 6.5%, which is also the first time in the past several years that we did not lower down our growth target. So we saw in the past several years from year to year, we lower down our growth target from 8% to 7.5% to around 7% to 6.5%. Now we keep this growth target this for this year. It's still 6.5%. And probably for the whole five-year plan, so this is the 13th five-year plan, so the growth target will be maintained at 6.5%. And we actually forecast that for the whole five-year plan, the actual growth target will probably be around 6.7%. So what does that mean? So if we take a closer look at the 19th Party Congress uh, re um, report and also this uh, Lianghui report, we will see that the government's top priority now is to achieve a moderately prosperous society, Xiao Kang Shehui. That's the top priority, top most priority. And what does that mean? That means we need to double, in, we need to double GDP growth uh, in 2020 on the basis of 2010. So that means we probably need a certain amount of GDP growth. We can not tolerate a very slow GDP growth. But we we also, do need, we, we also don't need to have an extremely fast growth because as our previous speakers already addressed, we see that the government is signaling increased willingness to accept a slower growth in exchange for higher quality development. It's a trade-off now. So, so as the government sets the goal of around 6.5%, we forecast the actual GDP growth for this year will be around 6.6%. Slightly higher than the gross target, but substantially lower than last year's gross uh, speed, which is 6.9%. Because we think 6.9% is a little bit unexpected. So a normal speed will probably be around 6.6%, which is uh, uh, the government's ideal growth. And we, we, we think the reason of a slowing GDP growth compared with last year 
is because number one, housing investment is expected to slow down. And, we, and also, the government is still in the process of deleveraging, which means less credit stimulus. And uh, we see the local government debt again becomes a big concern. So government will make efforts to curb the local government debt. And the housing bubble is also a concern. So housing market will remain uh, uh, pretty cool, in my view. But on the other side, we think the downside risk is also negligible. We don't think uh, Chinese economy will slow down too much. Because number one, the service sector now is indeed the main driver of Chinese economic growth. Because the total size of the service sector is over, over half, over 50%. But the service sector contributes to more than 60% of China's GDP growth. The net increase part. So service contributes to uh, more than 60%. And uh, this part is growing at over 7.5% every year. So this part will pull up China's GDP growth. And export, probably we will face uncertainties this year. But at least so far we see export is okay because the fundamental side, the global economy is recovering, it's still on, in a recovery pro process. And we see such kind of the recovery probably is going to expand uh, more to the peripheral countries. So I think that's the fundamental side. What well, policy side, we'll talk about this later. And a very interesting trend of Chinese economy, which makes me more positive, is we see a substantial recovery of the private investment, which is a sharp contrast to the situation in 2015 and 2016, in when we witnessed, at that time, we witnessed private investment dropped to below zero, dropped to negative growth at that time. But now, what we see is that China's private investment, uh, the end of last year, the end of last year, uh, we see the uh, yellow line is China's private investment. This is month on month data. And uh, the red line is the uh, China's SOE investment. And as the yellow line, we can see that in 2016, once, twice, the uh, private investment dropped to negative. But at the end of last year, we see a substantial recovery of private investment. And, and uh, the very, very shocking trend we saw is that a month-on-month -month growth rate, in the end of last year, the private investment surpassed SOE investment. And the single month private investment growth was over 9%. What about the beginning of this year? The beginning of this year, private investment remained high. And the first two months, China's private investment growth was 8.1%, which is also pretty uh, robust. So this gave us a lot of confidence on the, uh, on the economy overall. Um, and also we believe that if the bad thing happens, the economy slows to be significantly below 6.5% growth, we believe that the government has a lot of the policy tools. Chinese government got a very huge toolbox. So they can use their tools to bo boister the economy if the bad things take place. So this is China's uh, structural transformation. We see the yellow line indicates the tertiary industry, mainly service sectors. Service sector becomes significantly larger than the secondary industry. Well, China is still probably the world's factory, but actually the part that drives China's domestic economic growth is actually the tertiary. And this is China's export. The yellow, the yellow line is the month on month, and the red line is year to date. And the yellow line indicates that uh, they are compared to 2016, 2017, we see uh, 
much, uh, uh, much better situation in export. And at the beginning of this, uh, the, the beginning of this year, the past two months, we also see an uh, unexpected uh, rise of China's export. Probably the, the big increase of export last, last month, last month China's export was growing an, at 36%. Uh, that is probably not sustainable. But uh, if the policy, is, policy risk is under control, we still see a relatively uh, a robust export growth because of the fundamental side. Okay, this is private investment. So CPI, I think China may see a higher CPI. So in February, China's CPI was growing at 2.9%, uh, uh, which is significantly higher than in the past many months. And we believe that uh, CPI may increase uh, by 2.5% this year because of the uh, uh, PPI transmission to CPI uh, side and also because of higher food price. PPI side, PPI uh, may, may drop a little bit but may still stay high because of capacity reduction, environmental uh, uh, policies, and also uh, the low base effect. So I think generally speaking, I think China's inflation will, will be more Will, will be higher than the last year, which also limits the space for a very expansionary policy. So this is CPI and PPI. Uh, okay, so uh, this part, a lot of words, but I think uh, this is, a ver I think, uh, a very relevant part. So this is China's monetary policy. Okay, first of all, what's written in the government report? The government report the government work report about the monetary policy is consistent with what we saw in the Central Economic Work Conference taking place last December. There's no change. Okay, this is different from the previous year. The previous year, the Central Economic Work Conference and the Lianghui said that we was switched from a prudent and neutral uh, we, we, we will say that we will switch to be prudent and neutral. It's signaling a tighter monetary policy. This year, it's consistent, does not change. Still prudent and neutral. And there's control, money supply, reasonable growth, uh, money supply, loans, and total social finance, and uh, maintain a reasonable liquidity. But uh, I mean, one interesting thing is that the government work report specifically says that they're going to encourage direct finance, particularly equity finance, and guide the financial sectors to better serve the real economy. And an interesting thing is that this year, for the first time, that the government explicitly dropped the growth target of M2 and the total social finance. And we believe that this is because M2 and total social finance is no, are no longer very good indicators of China's uh, monetary situation and, uh, and also uh, not a good indicators of the, what's, what's going on in the real economy. And also, this indicates that the PBOC is going to switch to more of the price control instead of the, of the traditional quantity control. So they like to use more of the open market operation uh, policy rates, things like that. So, and on the, uh, our view on the monetary policy, our interpretation of the government work report is that we think that uh, the monetary policy may remain uh, prudent and uh, slightly on the tight side to support the D-level region and to guide the money into the real economy. And uh, we believe that in response to the possible rate hikes in the Federal Reserve, because the market all expected that there will be three or four times of the rate hikes in the Federal Reserve, and we think that as a response to that, China, Chinese, China's PBOC will continue to raise the policy rates, which is OMO rates, um, and uh, we think that a total increase of probably 20 basis points in the whole year. And uh, we do not think the, the PBOC is going to change the uh, 
benchmark interest rate because benchmark interest rate is no longer uh, their favorite. They do, uh, they do not like to use benchmark interest rate. And, uh, and uh, they think that uh, the market forces are getting more important than benchmark interest rate. But uh, the de facto uh, saving rate, the in, uh, uh, interest rate probably will be higher because of tighter liquidity and also because of the uh, wealth management product that uh, Professor uh, Jin already addressed. And this is China's deleveraging. And we can see that uh, uh, the bottom line, what is crimson, maybe the uh, crimson uh, line, so is uh, M2 growth rate minus nominal GDP growth rate. And uh, for recent months, we see M2 growth rate minus nominal GDP growth rate is negative, which means that M2 grows slower than GDP growth rate, nominal GDP growth rate, nominal. So this is uh, direct evidence of deleveraging. And if we see long growth rate minus nominal GDP growth rate, it's also lower than before, suggesting a rapid deleveraging process. And because of prudent or slightly tight monetary policy, we see the market rate is trending high. Both for Shaibo and for five years China's, China government bond yield rates. And we expect the market rates may continue to be high. And uh, for the bond market, this is not a very exciting news, but uh, that's the, you know, how the world probably will go. And the uh, liquidity may remain on the tight side. We expect, I mean, the government side, the government says, rep government basically repeat what, uh, what they have said over and over again, that they're going to keep CNY stable, and they're going to keep balance of payments stable, and then they're going to further open up China's financial market. Our interpretation is that a CNY, uh, we probably, uh, so this is a typo. We think that uh, generally it's, a st it's stable. But I think USD dollars may strengthen um, a little bit in terms of CNY to a little bit over 6.5. I mean, for this forecast, the market is extremely divided. But our view is that because of the uh, three or four times of the rate hikes from the Federal Reserve, despite it is probably very much priced in already, we think that uh, it's still a support to a uh, uh, dollar uh, rate. And also because of the uncertainties, uh, probably will be bigger this year than the previous year. The, uh, uh, the social economic uncertainty around the world, the political uncertainty around the world, uh, geopolitical uncertainty around the world. So I think uh, uh, the, the Federal Reserve's policy, policy uh, monetary policy and uh, the geopolitical risks are supports to dollar, US dollars. So, so our view is that probably uh, CNY exchange rate will soften to 6.55 by the year end. But uh, I think the volatility is lower than before. And this spread, this spread is not big enough um, to lead to a bigger capital outflow. We think the capital outflow is already under control. So this is a, a bilateral exchange rate of CNY US dollar. And we see CNY became pretty strong in recent months. But on the other side, we see the basket, CFETs, is relatively stable. So exchange rate probably will continue to be stable. This is China's capital outflow. And the interesting part is the yellow part. The yellow part is the non-FDI flow. And the red part is China's good, good trade surplus. So that brings us a lot of money. But uh, the yellow part is kept non-FDI flow. We can interpret this as a uh, hot money. 
I mean, in the bad time, we see the single month's capital outflow amount to about 150 billion. In some months in 2016, but now in recent months, we see the yellow part of the capital outflow became smaller and smaller. And in the past months, we even see capital outflow becomes inflow, which suggests that the capital outflow has been very much contained. And um, we believe that the PBOC and the SAFE will continue to monitor capital outflow. But given the situation is stabilized, probably they will, be, uh, they will adopt a, a, a little bit flexible, more flexible stance, but uh, overall speaking, I mean, it will still be closely monitored. And I think China will probably accelerate the WMB internationalization, which, is, which was marginalized in the past, past, in the past year. So the internet, remember international, internationalization gave way to stability, but this year we probably expect uh, uh, acceleration of remember internationalization on the condition that uh, IMF is going to review remember's uh, uh, situation probably later this year or next year. And uh, I think a hot topic will be the trade war. If the trade war takes place, so we believe that uh, there will be retaliations, but we think that uh, uh, exchange rate depreciation will be the last re resort, will not be a top choice of the policies. We think that a, a limited amount of the uh, tariff retaliation will be uh, highly possible. Fiscal policy is the very big ch change this year, fiscal side. I mean, the government's st uh, statement does not change. They say, well, we will ma maintain proactive fiscal policy. However, they cut the budget deficit over GDP ratio from 3% to 2.6%, which is a little bit surprising. Why was that? Well, my view is that because last year, I mean, last year, PPI trended very high, so that brought the government a lot of extra revenue because of higher PPI. So re revenue part will remain high, so the government thinks that uh, because of higher revenue, so the, they will maintain expenditure roughly the same. So they, they, they think that GDP is growing, revenue is growing, but expenditure will be kept roughly stable so that the deficit will be uh, can slow down a little bit to 2.6%. But uh, we should not interpret this as a tighter or contractionary fiscal policy. I think fiscal policy will be okay, not very expansionary, but it will be okay because we can see some concrete numbers. For example, the local government special bond, special bond. is set to grow substantially higher than last year, from 8 billion yuan to 1,350 billion yuan. I mean, of course, there's concern on the local government, local government bond issue. So we think that uh, the fiscal policy might be probably the same, pretty much the same as last year, maybe a little bit tighter because of the concern that government bond, but I do not think that there will be significant contraction on the fiscal side. I think a very big focus is a property tax. Property tax legislation probably will be more gradual than people thought. The government did not push forward property tax in this year's Lianghui. And I think w this is probably because of the huge dis disagreements uh, on you know, different, view, different views on how and when we should carry out the property tax. So the government is taking a very extremely cautious stance. We expect that the property tax sooner or later will come. And, and, and according to the government's legislation plan, uh, not government, the uh, NPC's legislation plan, we think that by 2020, eventually this will come to uh, 
will, 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 will come. But uh, the actual implementation of the property tax will be no, lo no earlier than 20, uh, 2022, probably even later, because that's the central government's uh, legislation, uh, central, uh, central MPC's legislation, and uh, then it will go to the local government. It takes a very long time, and also it takes a long, longer time to develop the infrastructure to, to levy this uh, property tax. But on the other side, we see, we expect a lot of drastic fiscal reforms on other types of taxes. For example, we think that a VAT tax will reform will probably take place this year. Uh, so, so now the VAT has three grades. I think the VAT probably will be reformed to, to two grades so that we will have a de facto tax reduction on VAT. And uh, probably we will also see reforms on consumption tax. And we already see the merger of the central and the local government tax collection system. And, and uh, to summarize all these tax reforms, we think that the local government's fiscal situation will be improved after all these tax reforms. And uh, I think another hot topic, just, uh, just uh, one additional note, is that uh, a lot of people think that, uh, well, in the US government is, uh, is uh, reducing tax. So what about the Chinese government? So Chinese government probably will not do a lot of formal tax reduction. But in the process of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, attracting FDI or attracting investment, uh, local government actually already implemented a lot of tax uh, benefits or tax uh, uh, you know, provincial arrangements. So that's the actual way of Chinese government to uh, reduce tax burdens. So to give a lot of provincial, uh, um, preferential arrangements on tax, on tax when they invite investments from uh, either you know, foreign investors or domestic investors. So this is uh, uh, my forecast to conclude my uh, talk. So, so we forecast GDP growth to be 6.6%. We forecast uh, policy rates to be 1.7, which is 20 basis points higher. And we forecast the exchange rate, dollar CNY exchange rate, to be 6.55 by the year end. So that's my main forecast. So thanks very much.